everyone. Welcome to episode 26 of the Yarnivore Podcast. I am Sadie, also known as Sadie Ruin on Twitter and Instagram, and Blue Ruin on Ravelry. I'm having some technical hair difficulties in that my bangs are getting too long. They're starting to hit in my eyes. I don't like it. Whatever. Whatever. You may notice that this is a couple days late. I was going to record as per usual on Friday, but... Bebop had an episode that was quite extensive, and yeah, so that took up a fair amount of my time. Um, I couldn't just leave him, so you know how that goes. I couldn't just walk away. He was freaking out just a bit too much, and he's had two major episodes the last week, so I'm hoping that doesn't mean I have to up his fluoxetine but we will see how everything rolls and so there was no recording on Friday because of that yesterday hubby was home it was Saturday we had fun we did a bunch of stuff that needed to get done and yeah now he's not here so I'm recording that's right I plan everything around my husband not really, but let, we could pretend I do. We could pretend that. Be a total lie, but we could we could work with it. Anywho, that's why I'm recording late. Uh, but I am recording. Yay! The sunlight is kind of getting iffy, so I may have to adjust some lighting as we go, and we may have some problems with getting like completely flamed out. I I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm still learning my lighting here. Oh, gone are the easy days where you just like, yeah. Recording was so easy back in Canada. So easy. So I have no finished objects. I wish I did, but I so don't. I don't. Sometimes it happens. This is one of those times. I have a bunch of works in progress though. So let's start with one you haven't seen yet. It is in my Sue bag that I love by um, Crafty Knitter 7 on Instagram. A Tangled Skein on, see I didn't bring the card, the card is in the living room. The Tangled Skein on Etsy. Um, gorgeous little bags. This is perfect for a sock, which is exactly what I'm doing. And I am using the Wandering Wool in the Knitting in the Nashville Night Colorway in the austere, no, Ossible Sock, which is a 801010 MCN base. It's this gorgeous set of purples. It's actually, that's truer to what it is right back here. It's very pleasant. I'm kind of weirded out by, this is really glossy and stiff, and I'm not used to that on ball bands. I don't know why, but I'm like, that seems a little excessive. Um, and she's from Washington, DC. I got it in my SSK bag, and I started these socks, which are actually gonna be a gift for someone. And, and I actually, I bought this to hold my DPNs. There you go. It has little kitties with yarn. Oh my god. I had to have it. And that I bought from the gnome knitter from My Hands to Yours, who's Joanna Olson on Etsy. There's the card. Pew. Are you going to focus? You're not going to focus because you feel like being a, a giant dick. But it's the gnome knitter at the Etsy store is the gnome knitter. So I was worried about this and I was using the the method a will to show me but it was like you know what I want some of these so I bought some. And then there's the tag. And it's got yarn balls on the inside like you can't go wrong. These are on 2.5 millimeter uh, Caspian by Knitpicks DPNs. 
The pattern is called Thicket. It is by Mercedes Tar Tarasovic. It is the SSK knit along. It's got these gorgeous little leaves. You can see. It's so perfect. I love it. But I think I'm going to change out the heel because it's got a. Uh, it's written for a. For, it's written for. For a. Uh, short row. I don't like short rows, so that's not going to happen. Not going to happen. I'm either going to do a heel flap or a fish lip kiss heel. I'm not 100% sure, but it's not going to be the short row. So that's how far I've gotten on that this week. Well, I've finished watching the Great Canadian or the Great Amer the Great British Bake Off, and I really wanted Martha to win. I'm I'm okay with it being Nancy. I would have preferred Richard, but as long as it wasn't Louis, I was fine because for some reason he annoyed me. Go figure. Uh, I still haven't found where I can watch more episodes here. Uh, there is a season worth on Amazon Prime, but it's the same season that's on Netflix. It is completely unfair. British people, you're lucky. All my British viewers, like, jealous I am of you. I am. So that was one of my works in progress. You, of course, have seen the wildflowers before. My R2-D2 awesome sewn by Lindsay bag. I got a, so I got two of these. And this is a different one. This one actually has four snaps. And it's really good for using for circular knitting needles, which I thought was kind of awesome. A very awesome idea. This one is from Studio in the Green. It's got little tea pots inside. This is an Alice in Wonderland one. Mine has the Cheshire Cat on it. And I love the double snaps. It's just so perfect. And she's out of Oregon, so she's really close. Studio in the Green. Etsy.com. And these are the wildflower socks. I actually put it, I put a marker. I've gotten some markers now, some of these claw, claw clasp or whatever markers. So I can actually tell you how far I've gotten. So there's my marker and there's where I am. Put it back here. I love the pattern. It's the Wildflowers pattern. It's by Fawn P. And it's a free pattern. I am using a US 1 2.25 millimeter needle. This is a Caspian 47 inch circular. I am the yarn. Ta da! Is Starman. It's Knitter's Nightmare Batty Sock in the Starman colorway. I'm loving it. It's very Bowie centric. It's got these awesome speckly things. I love awesome speckly things. You can see the speckles there. I just, it works for me. Um, it's a pretty easy repetitive pattern. Once I've done it a couple times, I, I'm just like, okay, I get it. But the downfall of this particular sock is that basically it's a four row repeat and then you move it over. And you do f the same four rows, it's just the, the start point is a little different. And it's free, so I'm not giving anything away that I, that's wrong here. Which is fine, but I find myself needing to do at least four rows every time I work on it, which means it can't be car knitter. Helicopters. Coming to take me away. Um... So, there's those, and I was like, last night, I was talking with husband, and I was saying, I don't want to start another pair of socks, but I'm going to start another pair of socks, because I don't have one, like, okay, I have two pairs of socks on the needles, which is kind of normal, but I don't have one that's just solid knitting. They're both patterned, and neither one I really want to take out and about. Which sucks because I like to knit in the car now. I mean, I've got 20 minutes before we get anywhere. Well, no, I think it's 10 to Walmart. It's 20 if we go into town. Don't ask. But 
So, I mean, there's there's a lot of car knitting I am not maximizing on. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to start some cotton socks. But then it's like, okay, then I'll have two socks for myself and a, a pair of gift socks. And I kind of feel bad about that. But, because I really need to knit a pair for the hubby. Maybe I'll knit him a pair of cotton socks. Those are really big. I don't know. Here, let me grab it. That's right. They're actually, like, really close. Ta-da! I could feasibly knit him one of these. And he would wear it, and he would like it. Because they're socks, and he's really okay with everything. So maybe I'll knit a pair for him. These, these are really big, which means he could have a pretty long cuff. Usually he gets stiffed with a short cuff because he's got such a long foot with the 400 yards. Uh, but these are, what, well, 380 meters. How much is that in yards, people? Is this the same as this game? I, but you know what? I know when I have skeins this big, I can get away with giving him a longer cuff. And this one is 412 meters. That was nice I would knit him this one, but I want this one for myself. <laughs> if I was nice, I'd give him this one, but I think I will give him this one. I don't know. Or maybe I'll keep, I don't know. Can I knit them both for myself? <laughs> I'm a horrible person. I just need him to pick something so that I can knit him something he likes. Because the browns work. But then again, he likes really neon green and stuff, like very Jokerish colors, so I don't know. I'm just gonna start a pair for myself, whatever. Whatever, I, I am not the worst person for sock knitting, so. Now, in my favorite Tracy bag, my only Tracy bag, but my favorite bag, because, like, it's got everything perfect on it. It's just probably the only reason I worked on this this week. Because I was like, I want to see the bag. I will knit on this. Uh, it's the Ancient Bark by Ilga Leha. Doop, doop. I haven't picked out what my edging is going to be done in. I don't think it matters yet. I'll pick it out when I'm like actually close to being done. I've got two repeats. I think you go. I think it's something ridiculous like you don't have to worry about how many repeats you have, but end on this. Uh, doesn't say there. There are like seven pages for this though and I'm not quite sure w what the heck is going on with that. How to change colors. Blah 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 blah. Work the chart 14 times or until your yarn runs out making sure you end a row 24. So, yeah, 14, I've got two. Actually, I've almost done three, so whatever. But it is really good for mindless uh, knitting, almost, when I was listening, or I was listening and watching the Charm of It podcast with Eva. Um, who else was I watching? And I was also watching Shannon Sock Cetera uh, talk about privilege, which was really nice, but I don't know. I have a weird relationship with privilege. Um, both of them are highly enjoyable. I didn't bring in my blanket, but I did like three more squares. So here's how far it has gotten. And here's my little stitch marker. It's actually my coffee stitch marker from Sue. 
of two Tangled Skeins fame of the Tangled Skein uh, Etsy shop. I really like your stitch markers, by the way. So, yeah. I've got a while. You'll probably see this for a while. It is knit on 3.75 millimeter needles or a US 5. And it is knit out of socks that rock medium weight in the Little Bunny Foo Foo colorway, which looks something like this in a ball. It's got a very light pink with, with shades of brown. I don't think it's available right now. It's one of those colors that comes and goes. It gets retired a lot. I think they just get sick and tired of dyeing it because it's been around forever. So there's that. And then, how many things do I have? Let's see. The 20 page pattern. Uh, I'm sorry, it's like 17. 19 or something. Nope, 21. It's a 21 page pattern, so be aware of that. This is the Jewel, J U L E, or Jewel, or however you say it, by Christina Korber Reith, or uh, Strickazite, S T R I C K A U S Z E I T. It's a very lovely pattern. However, it is also very evil. My stitch counts are off, and I'm not sure if that's me or if it's the pattern. It's probably me. I'm not even going to lie to you. It's like 2 in the morning when I was doing it. But whatever. I'll f Once I get it all joined together, I can fudge with it, and it's in my Mina Makes bag, which is holding up. I may have to change out to a different bag because this is getting redonkulously large. Okay. Last time you saw it, I had some of the back done. Right now, I haven't started the left front, so yet. I finished the right front. Okay, so basically that's what I've got. That's the right front portion with the collar. For the sake of the show, I will show you how it is supposed to sit. So it should sit something like... Something like that. It's not a very flattering picture, but whatever. So I finished the right side, I put it on the same waist needle that... Uh, is holding the back because hey why waste another needle and eventually you have to knit them all across anyway so uh, I finished the right front I have the back which you had seen so now next up I'm going to take this half and pick this up and do the left front then I get to do the whole body it's it's pretty, it's going to be awesome when it's done, but there are so many at the same times so that I kind of want to slap myself in the face for picking this. It is not, it's not what I was looking for. It's, well, it is what I was looking for. It's just, it wasn't, it, pattern wise, it's a bit more than what I wanted. I wanted simple and I thought the ribbing, the fact that it's mostly ribbing and there's nothing there's no cables, etc., that it would really be an easier pattern to follow, but apparently, no, because everything is supposed to be seamless, except that there's a seam, uh, top down. And so I thought top down raglan, no, no, no. It's gonna be gorgeous. This is out of hand spun. I used, what was it, five different hand spuns? So, like, it looks great. It's awesome. It's going to be nice and warm. I love everything about it, except for the fact that there are so many at the same times. I have at least three pages that I have to be constantly checking off boxes. And that sucks. For me personally, for what I was, what I was expecting or going for. I need to pick something easy next time because I really can't handle doing this too much. 
especially not if it's not the hubby sweater because the hubby sweater needs to get done and it's like if I'm gonna do four pages across I may as well just pick his out which I will be doing tonight so what's next up on the list there was no spinning I told you about everything I, th I bought there is there is this uh, there is a shop update going down it is currently up it went up on Friday. There's still a few things left. I will try and show you one of everything if I can do that without toppling. I can, haha. -ha. Alrighty. So, let's start with this guy. So there's an owl. If I hold him this way. So you've got stars on top, and an owl, and then on the other side it's got an owl as well and more stars. So there's an owl in the shop. If you're wondering what they look like, it's there. This one is the blue one. The green one is gone. What did I just... Ermigird. Ermigird. Everything is falling. There's my mess. Okay, so then we have restocked the Sunset on the Sound. There we go. And it's on regular Batty and Spectre, which is the sparkle base. And Dawn's right, it is the same colors. I'm not sure if you can see. It's the same colors as my logo and my tattoo, but it's still Sunset on the Sound to me. Splatterpunk is back. That's not going to show up at all properly, but there we go. Greens, speckles, it's back. Uh, electric Funeral's gone in Batty, but we still have a couple in the Spectre, which is the sparkle base. Um, Shadow of Olympians is back with the speckly wonderfulness. Hi, P. Petrie says hi. And then run through the jungle, which um, I pre I've only had once before. It's a very speckled yarn. And I actually kept one for myself from the last one because I just love how it looks. I love how it's speckled out. It needs to be a shawl, I think, or maybe a pair of socks. I don't know. I just really love it. I'm loving the speckle things right now. I'm into speckles. Speckles, they're fun. Um, let me see here. Right, yo. Right, right. So, the last thing I wanted to mention since I talk about it here is I decided I put down no logo for about two seconds and I read this pumpkin flowers a soldier story by Maddie Friedman it is about uh, the uh, war in Israel and Lebanon in 2000 in the early 2000s uh, he's he's actually a Canadian he's an Israeli Canadian uh, and it's kind of biographical, but it's kind of not. It's really hard to um, explain how he works it. F the first half is about not him, uh, and then the second half is about his experiences. And it's very interesting to see or to hear from someone on that side of the fence or on that end of the perspective uh, it is definitely it's not a pro-war book and it's not an anti-war book it's a this was my life for a little while and I think that makes it a good read because if it was pro-war I don't know that I'd like it and if it was anti-war I don't know that I'd like it either um, so it takes uh 
takes the political out of war and just says, this is what I did for a while. And here are the experiences I had and here's how it shaped my life. So I don't know if it's out yet. I got it. I got an advanced reading copy. That's right. I'm awesome like that. And so if you do like reading autobiography, um, true story, if you like reading a lot of the war stuff, you'll enjoy this. Uh, if you don't like reading war stuff, you'll probably still enjoy it from a human perspective. So go forth, read it if you'd like. <sighs> See, the, the thing on the front says, Destined to become a classic text on the absurdities of war, a beautifully written account of a young Israeli soldier's experience, a stunning achievement. I don't necessarily think that that's true. I don't think it's about the absurdities of war. I think it's, it's less about the absurdities of war and more like, this is just how life is for us. So, I don't know. I don't know if that's something you want to pick up, but I read it. It took me very little time. Uh, it's like 200 and some pages, under 300 pages. I just wanted to say that and now I'm going back to no logo although that one is really heavy in economic theory so I may pick a nonfiction to level it out a little because falling asleep reading it after like five or six pages is gonna take me a while to get through it all right that's everything I had for this week I will check in with you next week I have the dentist tomorrow. I'm so not looking forward to it. Hopefully I'm back up to snuff by Friday. <laughs> um, check out the shop. It's knittersnightmare.com. Come join the Ravelry group. It's your Nivers. Uh, everything else, come ask me questions in the Q&A thread. Uh, keep participating in the Yarnivore, Yarnivore ASMF Cal. I've got like three things going for it right now, so yay. And there's a chatter and an FO thread. Get involved. I will see you next week.